Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have Lauren LaRosa here, our special guest host. And we got a special guest with us today. We had a topic talking about some statements that she said, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Ebony you know, K. Williams. Don't, don't nobody stir it up like Ebony K. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Envy? What's up, Char? What's Good up, morning, Ms. Lauren? Good Hi, morning. how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Envy, I was going to be very, very pissed and disappointed if you weren't Skyping in, so... Why? Well, because I didn't know if I'd ever be back up here, to be candid. If you don't After stop. The last, no, I really didn't. Why? Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was tight last you think time. So? Yeah, but God is good. I came you, with my godly you, own. You don't think so? Godly <laughs> on. We good. It's really, God is good. I would say this. You know, every time we have a conversation, we're always not going to agree, but you're always invited up here regardless. I mean, we're not going to agree on everything, but the, the best thing about us is just having a conversation. So never think that you can't come up here for something you say. No, that's what these conversations and these platforms are about. I, I'm half playing, but but it's a good point, and it's it's worth saying out loud. So I appreciate that. And I love Much you, love. sister. I don't I, I don't want you to think I don't love you. I love you for real. It's, like it's it's I appreciate family. everything that you do. Absolutely. And it's just like anything else. You go hardest in the paint with your fam. So mm -hmm. well, yes, in the paint, as in the paint that's on your face. Envy. Oh Shut God. up, Charlamagne. Well, I'm happy you're here. Thank you, I Lauren. I said yesterday I would love to have a conversation with you about the video. Now, yes. what's, what's the topic of conversation? I feel like this is a conversation that men shouldn't even be involved in. But what, I agree. Is, what is the gist of the conversation? It's not for you, Charlamagne. I so agree. I'm glad that you said that. Um, this is a conversation for ladies. And I texted uh, my good friend Charlamagne. I said, as a friend to the show, I, I heard the conversation yesterday. I appreciated the critique and the constructive nature of it. And I said, you know, since I'm down the street on the train, let me pull up and, and I want to hear from you, Lauren, about what you agree with and what you disagree with and have a, a ladies conversation about Let's it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I think for me, um, I'll start with what, the, what I disagree with. Let's well, well Kim, first, for people that's the, that don't oh, know, you sure, want to okay. play the clip of, of what went viral yeah, so, so people let's understand that. that? The reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year. No matter how good we look, no matter how fit we are, men are still seeing primarily our presumed dwindling fertility as a knock against us. So here's my advice. If you are a young black woman in college and you know in your heart and in your head that you wanna prioritize family, I suggest that you simultaneously pursue that MRS degree right along with that BA or JD. Because the handful of black college age men that actually do desire to get married soon and they do share that value system and family is a priority for them too. Y'all, that is an incredibly small pool and it's shrinking as you get older. And by the time you reach my age, 40, you will be faced with different choices relating to life partnership and motherhood. So I think, um, all right, so breaking it down into what I agree and what I disagree with. So the disagreeing for me came with the starting with the infertility and the uh, the market value, the appreciating. So with the infertility, I know some, I said this yesterday, stuff, some stuff is science, right? You can't get around that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you start with that and you lead with that, it then makes people get defensive and they don't even hear the rest of it. I know when I first listened to it, I was like, oh God, this is going to be another one of those conversations where like someone's telling me as a woman, by the time you get this age, your life is over. And mm. you know, when you're when you're like trying to figure things out and you're like, mm. I'm 31 years old, right? Mm. Like I'm recently out of a very long relationship. I heard. You want to feel, not nah, I heard. Charlamagne told you, told me. Yeah, Charlamagne. He always oh, Charlamagne. Me. Charlamagne told me. Jesus Christ. Charlamagne told me, Lord, it's, you know. But I, I feel Don't like, worry, there's life after. Go ahead, sis. I know, and, and I, and that, but no, but that's my point. It's like, mm. I, for me, I made a, a very conscious decision with a lot of things in my life, going to college, being in the relationship that I yeah. was in, not being in that relationship, even with my like recent, you know, back and forth to East Coast, West Coast, like I've always had to be very conscious and cognizant of the fact that like, you know, as a woman, as a black woman, right, especially working in the space that I work in, I might not get that that other chance. Like I gotta do it right the first time. And I think- You're talking about professionally? I, pro professionally and personally. Okay. And only because that's what. And what are your personal goals? Just so we're clear, do you, you want marriage? My personal and goals. I want marriage. In that I want nuclear children. Yes. Family I want, foundation. Mm -hmm, I okay, want great. all of that. Great. Um, I don't even have a number of kids. Once we start, we start. I just want oh, to have no, twins first. Oh no, we're not going to get into the minutia of that. But, but yeah, you, but you yes, be a mother. I want, I, yes, I will. I'm, okay. I'm going to be a, an amazing mom. But I just feel like when you lead with the stuff that you lead with, it instantly turns the conversation negative. And for someone like me who is watching and learning and listening to you. Mm -hmm. It makes it where now I am defensive. I don't want to watch, listen, and learn. I don't hear the rest of what you're saying. So now I'm not being taught. And I should feel like I can listen to you and learn from you and not feel like you're the op, right? And that's how it starts off when you instantly are telling me 
everything negative about what I already am facing every single day. And I think that that's a big part of it too, is like when you put certain truths in front of people, mm. it hurts, people don't wanna hear it. Sure. But beyond that, like you can't get around the infertility. The second thing was the market value, right? I don't agree. Like I don't know where you were at 31, but for me, I feel like I'm just now getting to the space where like the people that I'm able to, or not even able to, but the people that I'm dating, the life experiences that I'm experiencing that are teaching me what I want, what I don't want, I'm right now in the sp the best space that I've ever been in. And that wasn't me in college. I didn't know what I wanted in college. I didn't know who I was in college. I seen nothing, haven't done anything. I also, I didn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. But, so, go ahead. We, yeah, let's, yeah, let's just, cause you put two big ones out and let's break them down before we get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so you're 31 years old, a college educated woman, uh, enjoying a very successful career in a high profile space. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hands together for all of that. Now, when I say market value depreciating, Lauren, did you hear what I said before that? Did I, did you hear the specificity of the particular marketplace I'm speaking about? No, which was that? Okay, so I wanna just go back actually to your first point, Lauren, which I think you are conceding that you had a reaction to my commentary that was so visceral in nature that you actually shut down your listening comprehension skills. Mm. Yeah. You said that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so because of that though, right, I'm not going to sit in a posture of ownership because you made a choice to be limited in the way in which you received and processed the information. Now, you are a grown woman and you have autonomy over what you choose to consume and what you choose to not consume. So when I was giving the advice, the strategy, the game, putting you know certain people up on some game, I'm, I'm talking to a very limited pool of young black ladies, the, the ones that are currently in school or immediately following school or graduate school. And then the other caveat, I'll say, the other place this information is in real time relevant to are the mothers or even the fathers of those young women. That's who this is for. So you, this is actually not even applicable to you, Lauren. So, so you, no, no, let me finish. No, right, no, on. I have wait, to finish wait, because wait, you. Wait, no, 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 wait, 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 the reason why people also, because not just me or the people, because even the people it's meant for, I'm sure some of them did the same exact thing as well and too, right? And some did not. Right, and some did not. And some I, did not. Right, right. Because but you read I, all the comments, right? Yeah, I did. And but some what people I really but what appreciated that. what I think happens that. is with you, and I, I this, saying this in the most respectful way, I think that the way that you approach things, like even this conversation right now, yeah, it can make it, it 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 does that. It dilutes the whole point of for like where, you. For, it, for you. For you. You're talking Lauren. to me specifically. Yeah, right now. So. You agreed with Ebony though. I agree with certain parts of it, but mm -hmm. I think that the, the my whole point of what I'm saying, right? Because right now I feel like you're taking what I didn't agree with and the fact that I don't remember specific words or whatever no, I'm you not, said. Don't, Lauren, really, I really think this would be better served and more productive if just like I, it's kind of like an opening statement in, in a court of law. I gave you a good amount of time to lay out two prongs of disagreement. And I respect and appreciate both of your positions. I'm not saying they are wrong. Look at Envy Messy. Um, I'm not <laughs> saying they're wrong at all. <laughs> but I am Go saying ahead. that I don't know how productive it is to be the time, manner, and delivery police, right? So when we talk about, and also this, the nature of this work that we all do in this space of media and journalism, whatever we wanna call it, right? It's very subjective in nature. So for everybody, Lauren, that takes your position, which is very valid, it was visceral to me, I found it triggering, it felt hurtful, it, I felt attacked, I felt policed, I felt shitted on, whatever it is, there's also a whole nother contingency of black women that felt seen by that commentary, that felt heard. I had sores coming up to me, we had a fundraiser, uh, shout out to the Pi Kappa Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, ski we. Uh, we had a fundraiser that very night that that commentary dropped. And I had sores coming up to me who are more in my age group, right? Because that's the, that's the first thing we need to acknowledge. Yeah. Lauren and I are not the same age. Mm -hmm. There's a good 10 years between me and this lovely young lady. Mm -hmm. So I am speaking from a purview of experience that looks a bit different. Not vastly so, but a bit different. I agree. And my peers who are 40 and up are like, I wish someone would have told me. And the fact that you are doing the labor Ebony, you are doing the service of letting young girls that are currently in position to put themselves in best practices because they are currently in school or graduate school or shortly thereafter 
matters. And, and, it's, and it's good that somebody is rolling up their sleeves and doing the work and having the conversation publicly that quiet as kept. Many pockets of black elite culture are having with their children generationally every day. Many of my peers, Lauren, when I went to UNC Chapel Hill, who were black, just like me and you, right? Mm-hmm. They were taught going into the front end of freshman year, keep your eyes open, you know, get those grades, get that degree. I expect you to go to medical school or law school or PhD. And also, if you want the traditional model, and that's a big if, this is going to be the best time to be surrounded by the highest concentration of black men that are also pursuing the educational and fiscal model that you are and you desire. And well, it's really no more or less than that. I don't I don't disagree well, well, hold, with that. Hold, hold, hold on one second, guys. Hold, hold on one second, ladies. Uh, we got to uh, take a break. So we'll come back and we also want to take some calls. 800-585-1051. And if you're just joining us, that's Lauren LaRosa. She's our special guest host today. And Ebony K. Williams is up here. And I think it's very important when we come back. Let's talk about what we agree. With. About the last time you had a conversation with a man about what he values in women. Because I want to be very clear, Lauren, because you make a really good point that I think was misconstrued by a few. I am in no way saying that the market value on life of black women is depreciating. As we age, as we get more educated, as we get more fiscally fit, as we buy properties, as we build in our careers, our market value in life, Lauren, is ascending beyond the greatest heights of, of God. But I'm talking about the dating market. I'm talking about how men are perceiving us in terms of marketplace value for their partnership desires. So let's have that conversation, if you don't mind. What do you think most hetero, we're just going to kind of focus on black men and black women for the sake of this conversation for this moment. Mm -hmm. What do you think most hetero educated black men are looking for in a woman partner? Come on, Lauren. Kevin Samuels prepared you for this. Stop. Um, Let the dead rest in peace, Charlemagne. You're right. I think age does come into it. I think that they're looking younger. Mm -hmm. I think that they want someone who is like very supportive across all, like across Mm -hmm. the board. Like my man is my king type of thing. How about availability? Availability is also a thing as well too. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think that, especially when you start talking about like men who are like planning for like family and things Mm -hmm. of that nature, they definitely want somebody that is going to be, when you talk about availability, be able to really tend to family to like all of that stuff. Like I think that that is very important. I don't necessarily think that the men that I've had conversations with recently are upfront and honest about that. They're lying. Yeah, they're not upfront and honest about that. We're on the same page. Yeah, not at all. But but, let's just make a pause on that, though, just for the sake of not. We understand that, but let's kind of expand that. So what Lauren is saying, and it's very important, is that oftentimes men like to be the good guy, right? Can we just acknowledge that? Men, for despite their behaviors and choices and the way they oftentimes show up in the world, you know, it's like a man will keep a girlfriend, have 15 million side chicks, because why? He don't want to be the bad guy and break up with his girlfriend. That's the kind of stuff men tend to do, right? And I can, spoiler alert, it does not get better as they age. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I believe that men mean well when they say they're looking for their Michelle Obama, when they say they're looking for the Beyonce to their Jay-Z, but they're lying. Would you oftentimes. agree they can't they can't handle that ego wise as well? I'm not going to say go in that direction. What I am going to say is what they prioritize are the things you just laid out. They want a woman who is accommodating to them. They want a woman who, especially more successful men, they mm-hmm. want a woman that when they say, "Hey, yo, I'm going to um, the south of France for two weeks." Uh, pack your bag, let's go. Let me tell you what they don't want to hear, Lauren. Oh, I got to go to sh- sh- to L.A. to shoot Judge Ebony for three days. Oh, I got to go be at a uh, conference uh, in Florida for black women attorneys uh, gathering. Oh, I got to go to personal, sorority Ebony. thing. Mm-hmm. It's not like based on a true story. It's yeah. all based on true story. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> Charlamagne, <laughs> shut up. Let these women talk, please. Right. Yeah, no, 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 but I'm glad he said that because when you when you said that, I'm like, damn. So she, she this has is my a, lived experience. Yeah, you, yeah. Got, you got some some background, like personally. I, that. Yeah, there's a vulnerability in this conversation that I really want people to feel right now because because and in your de- yeah just pointing out the delivery yeah. point that i was trying to make mm-hmm. earlier in your delivery and i know content right and i understand what you do you're really good at what you do content wise you it I, always I, causes I, these I things i don't not look right? like it i know Period. it's great um it's but i think <laughs> <It's> jokes <laughs> i think for me like uh, when i say that i disagree with those things that we talked about mm-hmm. uh, what i wanted to make clear earlier was 
and I think we kind of got to this. Me disagreeing doesn't mean that what you're saying to me is just like, oh, this is BS. Oh, this right. isn't true. Like, because mm -hmm. what I just said, it goes to a lot of the points that you made. Right. I think that the disagreement again comes in with how you say it and we don't get that vulnerability, right? So me sitting here with you right now mm -hmm. is like, this is what I want to feel when I see the content. I might not always get that sure. though. And maybe it's not, like you said, it wasn't for me. It was for the girls that's still in college, right? Correct. But at the same time, it's placed on my timeline. So I get it and I feel it and sure. I stop and I listen either way. But and I'm glad you do. Shout out to the team at the Grio. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But what did you first, agree with though, the, but well, I was going, going, going to get to that. But what I did agree with was the fact, like when you started talking about the pool of men getting smaller when yes. it comes to those men who men who will be honest about what they want when it comes to the family, Absolutely. a woman, mm -hmm. they are actually worth the time, the mm -hmm. energy. It's it's consistent. You're getting the same energy that you're putting mm -hmm. out. It does get smaller as you get older. And like now that I'm out here in the dating world, I'm like, oh, okay. And keep in mind, you're only thirty. Something, right, thirty-one. So and it's like as you get to forty, that that the the pool the pool has shrunk further. Fifty, even hey. more so. Mm. And I've dated Girl, up I'm to late fifties. I'm gonna have a man before I'm fifty. Listen, I'm not. And listen, I'm not it, even, I got. I got. <laughs> I, got I, up before no, no, no. Baby. I actually believe in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So I believe. So you speak. So you you have, and you will desire. I do want to speak to the fertility part because it's very important. It is. Um, as I sit here with y'all today, uh. You know, I'm literally on some fertility drugs. I am preparing for my embryo transfer in the next few weeks. Now, I am 40 years old, just turned 40 a couple of weeks ago. Y'all know I've been very transparent about my motherhood journey. I'm doing mm -hmm. it solo by choice. Y'all know I froze eggs at 34 years old. I'm mm -hmm. doing this. I'm excited to be a mom. Uh, I'm scared as hell. I know it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, and yet I cannot wait to enter this, this, this mother era mm -hmm. of my life. And also, Lauren, I don't think this is how most black women want to do it. Why? I was going to say, why solo by choice? Uh, well, several reasons. Number one, I'm no longer willing to wait to activate my pursuit of motherhood. I'm no longer willing to wait. I've been married and divorced in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. I had also a long-term relationship many years ago. I ended a engagement during the pandemic. I'm ready for my baby. Right. I am ready to build my legacy in this way. I am ready to pour into someone other than me, finally. It took me a very long time to get here, but when, when, when she's ready, right she's ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that most w women, most black women, desire doing this journey alone. That's very I don't. Important. It's very important. very important. Yeah. And, I, and I know that you mentioned yesterday the egg freezing, so let's talk about that. Yeah. Because I think that that is marketed, not just you, Lauren, I think in general, that is in a lot of these comments, right? Well, girl, just freeze your eggs and don't worry about the rest. Nah, that's some bullshit. Because I'm here to tell you because I'm living it, right? I froze eggs at 34. I never thought in a million years I would need to use them, right? Mm -hmm. Because why? I was in a loving, committed relationship. Th these were my spare. Mm-hmm. Have you frozen eggs at this point, dear? No, I thought about doing it last year. I thought about starting the process. Okay, so let me just, and this is not investigative. This is, I'm just trying to see something here. Do you know how many eggs, on average, a woman should have on ice, on reserve, frozen, for a probability of one live birth? No, I don't. About 20. Then if I say, okay, how many egg retrievals are required to get about 20 eggs in a woman that's, say, 35 and up? The answer is at least two. What's the cost average of an egg retrieval? Amy probably knows this, but he knows it's between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars mm. per retrieval cycle. That most average. insurances don't cover. Most insurances do not cover unless you're working at Google or Amazon. And by the way, you probably need to be married for them to cover it. Otherwise, they consider it elective. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize it as infertility in the mm -hmm. way that married couples that struggle to conceive have. So what I'm saying is the egg freezing route, the single motherhood by choice route, the IVF route are amazing technological tools, Lauren, but they are wealthy women tools, mm. period. Let's be very clear. That That's is a true. rich woman option. If you are, and I, nobody's more important to me in our society than our educators, right? So let's say I'm talking to my soul who's a teacher in Memphis, Tennessee, who's probably on average making 65 to $75,000 a year doing most some of the most incredible work of our community. Where's that sister getting $30,000 for two retrievals or even 15,000 for one? That's and right. that's before I've done a transfer. That's before I've had a failed transfer and having to do another one, which Envy has experienced, uh, you know, and thank mm -hmm. God they had a healthy uh, baby subsequent that naturally. Right. But you see what I'm saying? It's just more to it than just freezing it. I get you. I think with that part for me, I was speaking from my own personal experience. And I think that like hearing you respond to it, mm -hmm. I can understand your response to what I said. 
But I think maybe I should have been a, a little bit more clear because yeah. for me, at that still freeze them though. By yeah, the way, because you have that, money. At that time, when I was thinking about doing it, it was because the insurance that I was getting through my employer supported that to a certain extent. Where right. anything, adi- like yes, it is expensive, but mm-hmm. I would have been able to figure it out. So it was I think a, you should still do it. I, I want that to. I don't want that missed here. I'm still got, encouraging will, you to do it. I will say I got a little bit. I got like scared out of it a little bit, mm-hmm. only because Fear is of, not of God. Don't do that. But but more so because of what like Envy shared with me, what you talked about, like going through all of that and then it I'll go for with it you. to not work, right? I'll go with you. We could talk about I'm it. I'm very serious. Okay. I really so so I'm saying two things here, and this is important in this conversation, y'all. People have got I encourage people, I'll say, to hold space for more than one thing at one time. Yeah, that's I true. am saying And that was my yeah. that was my reasoning, right? Because well, for, first, let me get back to one thing. So then you talked about the people with the resources who are able or, or not able to do it because of financial reasons, right? Right. And when I heard you say the women in college, because another issue that 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 I agreed with, but people, some people were like, uh, about was, because I think- What two, were they like, Lauren? The, uh, right. The headlines didn't help, right? Because you're, you're, what the headlines are saying is like, Ebony K. Williams is saying, while you're in college, you also should be trying to get a ring to her. Like people, if you there's a big if, if which you acknowledge, I pointed that out because yes. that 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 matters, that right? Is a, if that is one of your primary goals, if you choose that, but this right. is, but I think when you said that with mm-hmm. the women in college, I thought about me and my friends in college, right? While we're in college, we don't have the money to do that, but when we graduated, we all became very successful in our careers, mm-hmm. financially doing well. We had that resource because we were black women who took the time to get our education and then apply it to what we wanted in life. So I instantly put those women in that category. So I didn't even think about the people who weren't financially able because right. I thought that the people that you were speaking to, back to your point of who right. you were talking to, were women that one day would be able to do it. And I, the reason why I was like, that that's not what I wanted to hear was because mm-hmm. I felt like how I've been spoken to is like, people will tell you not to do things, right? Because they will say, okay, well, it's going to be financially hard or where will you get the resources? And it's like, why can't I afford to do it? Like, Yeah, but you understand clearly, if you've, I'm not sure for how familiar you are with my content, Lauren, but the folks here in this room that are, everything I talk about is about prosperity and living a first class American wealthy existence for black folks, period. I, I know that you do that, but what, what I, when I hear that, and I and I know how people will take it in in the some conversation people. will run. Some people will take it and the yeah. conversation will run. They may not know that and they may not present it that way. So now to me, I said I feel like I put a dark cloud because now you're like, OK, these women are in college. And then most of the, the I know I'm a black woman. So when I'm hearing that, I'm instantly like, OK, people are going to use this to be like the black women who graduate with the degrees. They mm-hmm. don't have those options because of A, B, C and D. Number one being finance. No, it's right? the opposite, and that's not a right? conversation that I don't want. No, no, no. To so, so I think that's so interesting like that, that that's the way you heard it. <clears throat> I believe that's the way you heard it. But I think that there are also people that hear it the complete opposite way, Lauren. And we have to make the space for that. I hear you saying you heard my commentary in general and you, you heard a woman advocating for a glass being half full. They're, excuse me, half empty rather. And then there are those that heard what I was saying. It was like, shit, that's some great perspective. I wish someone would have told me when I was positioned to do something about it. Mm-hmm. I am certainly going to advance this piece of uh, advice and commentary to my children or the kids in my church or the kids in my, you know, Jack and Jill chapters or whatever in the world and making sure that they have this piece of knowledge or, or or optionality that I'd never had because no one ever told me and they're seeing it as the glass half full and I love that for them but do yeah. you feel like the blogs and a lot of people that reported on it picked it up that way I, I think the LA Times did and no I, but and I feel like what Ebony just said now is very important all Ebony is saying is this isn't ideal and you don't that, want it's folks, not it's you, not you don't want folks to have to necessarily go through this for me right. I I mean, what I'm, to... let me just reiterate that because that's very important because this is this is these these stakes are very high lauren i'm fifty thousand dollars into uh ivf journey by myself so i don't have a husband splitting that with me which i which there's reasons why that's preferable for me mm-hmm. but i really need people to hear that and i'm taking shots and i'm giving them to myself and i'm doing all this to bring life into this world yeah and and i don't take it lightly because it's a very serious thing so i think when we were very cavalier not not just you right but in general with oh just ivf or oh just marry outside the race that, obviously been there done that too oh, I that don't that Oh, well, I heard some snow. No. King commentary I earlier. I said like there was snow. I said that I was cute. Like now crab. I can't eat snow. Well, hold up, oh, 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 hold up guys. Hold up, guys. We, we got to take some calls. Yeah, we got to take some calls. Oh, my God. We got to take some calls. 800. We're doing this up because yeah. I feel like people get this. 105. I mean, if you watch, if you listen. To, okay, let's go. We're going we got to take some calls when we come back. And I just want to say this. We got to do this. I just want to say this. Most people don't know what what Ebony's going through right now with the with the in vitro and infertility. No, because most people haven't been through it. And the fact that. 
podcast. Thank you, no, thank but, you, Charlamagne. But, but, but the people that listen to Hold the Court, they get no, every day. Bites when but they the, the fact that room. she has to do it by herself is, right. is, is is a lot. Like she has to put them shots in her that stomach and, and and all that by herself. Thank you, Envy. And most people don't know it. Like I can't even imagine if my wife had to do it by herself yeah. or a woman having to do it by herself and go to those doctor's appointments. So it is a lot. Room by yourself, it's a lot. I can't imagine it. And the transfer. We'll talk some. We'll take some calls when we come back. We got to talk about the stuff that we agreed with too, because a lot of people agree with some well, things. I'm sure the callers will probably okay. get to some of it, but but we ain't got all that much time, guys. Okay, eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Let's go. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Uh, morning, everybody. It's DJ NV uh, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Our special guest host Lauren Larosa is here, and Ebony K Williams is still here. We're having a, a, a grown-up discussion this morning, and we're opening up the phone lines. I'm gonna let uh, you guys out there get a chance to chop it up with Ebony K Williams. All right. 800-585-1051 and uh, we just want to say it's a respectful conversation so as soon as the disrespect happens we, we're banging on that's you that's right so no bus drivers right okay bus driver, gate, bus driver gate has happened we're on to um, something else now you stop it Charlemagne. hello who's this good morning Chris hey Chris this is I don't even think we should be talking to guys I don't want to hear from any men yeah, I don't think this we should be talking to men. no men about this this is not a, men for, a conversation for men to co-op uh, and celebrate their mediocrity I agree <laughs> Jesus. Back to the bigotry of low expectations you, for you, you boy. I, 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 I teed it, I teed it up right yeah. for you, Charlamagne. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, because that, that co-op is happening. And don't, uh, don't think I don't see it in the comments. I, I can't wait to use that in an argument. Jesus. You're just yeah. co-oping your mediocrity. You yeah, don't you're know what that man your identified as. But all right, let's go to another caller. Hello, who's this? <laughs> Not that y'all didn't know what he identified as. Hello? Alicia? Hey, Alicia. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good. Ebony K. Williams is here. You got a, you got a question, comment? Let's discuss it. Oh, well, I just kind of wanted to agree with her. First of all, um, she stated that if this is the if this is what you want in your life, this is what I suggest. So she was not pushing that on anyone. But if we're being honest, that's what our counterparts teach their girls. So go to college and find a husband. Education is almost secondary to especially white Southern women. So I don't see a problem with it. Is that true? Thank you, sis. Yes. It absolutely is true. So, yes, you know, yes. I went to UNC Chapel Hill, mm -hmm. a very predominantly white institution uh, in the South, as the good sis just mentioned. And that ring before spring shit is serious for mm. them. Uh, and it's it's twofold. What they're looking to do, because our counterparts tend to view marriage primarily through a lens of economic stability. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. Yep. Uh, and historically, we know that is the nature of marriage the uh, the, correct it's a, it's a transaction of sorts and i know once again uh you know the tears are going to roll when i say that out loud for some I don't because know why. For, for, because they they are not willing to really stand in the reality of the tenets of of marriage in america today love don't pay mortgage uh, right so that's that's the reality and our counterparts do it all the time the difference is they are not shamed when they do it i think that when you see black girls and black young women going and making the space for marriage as as much of a priority as education. It flies in the face of a generation that told me and mine, go to school, stay focused, don't get pregnant. Boys are a distraction, right? They're going to throw you off your game. Get your education, get your money, get your house, get your power, figure out who you are, stand in it, and then go partner and get married and live happily ever after. The challenge with that, because that's the model I, I, I took, I'm proud to have taken it. I had a little default start in marriage that was not for me, so I divorced him. Not a problem, great guy. Here's the thing, <laughs> here's the thing, is most black women do want the traditional marital nuclear family model. Mm -hmm. And when you get to a certain level of income as black women, a certain level of power, this a certain level of being able to travel the world on your own dime and be in the sky lounge without some dusty sun swipe. That shrinking okay? happens. The shrinking happens. And also, let me tell you what else. You move different, sis. You move. You, you, you think your swag is on a thousand today and it's very high and I, I love seeing it. Wait till you wait till you're over that million dollar a year mark of income. Wait till it's like, wait till you own your, your $1.7 million property in your own name and only your name is on the deed. Based on a true story, I've been to That's a, <laughs> so I'm just saying, you, you, you ain't nobody gonna be able to tell you shit unless they're coming all the way correct. Period. And that's gonna make that pulse pool rather even smaller. Go ahead, Andy. We'll go to Let's take call. some more calls, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Hello, who's this? Hello, good Hello. Morning. who's this? Hey, what's your name? Sophia. Hey, Sophia, what's your question for Ebony K. Williams? Not question. Well, I guess a question. I have a few things. Like, how were you raised? 
Um, I was seeing, I seen that you were 40. I'm 48. I'm a black woman raised with black women. We were not raised to go look for a man. We were not raised to, it doesn't matter. Like we wasn't raised to just go look for a ring. Oh my God. I just have to have a man. We were raised to respect ourselves, to love God. And if God saw fit for us to be married, our husband would find us. Like it's like you putting your your failures or how that you seem like you failed because you didn't get a ring in college. That you putting it off on other women, especially black women. When that's not how black women I don't know any other race, but that's not how I was raised. Okay, let Ebony respond. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, good morning, good sis. So listen, I was raised by a God-fearing, incredible black woman named Gloria uh, who raised me to go to school, go to more school, get the bag, and stand in my truth and power. So that's the first answer to your question. Uh, as for failure, I don't have any in the space, dear. Uh, I actually was married. I had a beautiful cushion-cut diamond on my finger until I decided to give it back because I no longer wanted to be married. So I don't have failure in the space. The only reason I'm not married is because I divorced my husband. Now, as to putting this on black women, I'm doing no such thing. What I know for fact, because I have sorority sisters, I have good friends, I have a strong global sisterhood of black women who tell me, some of them, tell me that despite their success, despite their careers, and despite their money, they, in their heart of hearts, still desire marriage. It is something that they want. And I think we got to get rid of shaming black women for wanting what they want. It's not, I'll give you this um, as a handbag example. Um, some, some people like Birkin bags. If, if Lauren comes and tells me, Ebony, I want to get a Birkin bag, let me tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to try to convince her to get another kind of bag. I'm not going to say, girl, have you seen the Chanel's? Well, what about the Louis Vuitton's? I'm not going to talk to you about how uh, Hermes bags are, are priced out of range and, 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 and they should be more accessible to people. No, I'm going to talk to you about how to get the money situation together so we can walk in Hermes right there on Madison and make your dream a reality. And that's all I'm doing. For the black women that that is already a desire of their heart to be married in a timely fashion, that's who this advice is for. If you don't want that, I want nothing but what you want for yourself. Is the caller still on the line? No, no let's, let's, let's go to. If let's you go to don't one want that, go get the Michael Kors. I will say though, I think yeah, go get the Michael Kors. I think a lot of people take the stance that she took because you literally like a lot of people don't know certain things, right? They don't listen. Yeah. But I also think <laughs> that, that say that people, part one more time. They don't know certain things and they don't listen. But wait, go ahead. another important point yeah. is I think a lot of people take you just as a personality and all that you have going on mm-hmm. as like you look and speak down on people. And I think with black women is instantly mm-hmm. triggering because we've had that happen so much, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why that happens where she's like well how were you raised like even the way that she came into that call was like you think that you're better or you think that you're right. doing something that other people have not done right and i think that happens a lot with you yeah it's a projection yeah so i'm 40 right so none of that's new lauren just so you know like I know, I'm just, when you walk through the world carrying yourself the way i do having my aesthetic projections and presumptions about who i am and what my values are come with the territory but that's also why I do the work I do. I got 100 episodes of Holding Court people can watch. I'm on every day here locally in New York, Channel 55, okay, 1130 AM. Equal Justice with Judge Ebony. Yes, I'm judging you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and several other things. I got two books out, including... Ben on bike. What'd you say, baby? I saw Equal Justice in Vegas. You saw it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's nationally syndicated. I'm in 85% of American homes. So there's lots of content to consume. Well, let's go to another call, and I just want to put out there, uh, Ebony K. Williams is talking that talk. She has a gold uh, 35 Birkin bag. With, Thank you, baby. Uh, look like gold hardware. You, you, uh, you're correct. There. Yellow gold. Thank you, yes. Envy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true man of Hermes. Mm-hmm. Y'all yes. rich. That's oh, y'all what, rich. I said, I, it, my uh, husband sh- better be able to spot the bags like so that. Rich. Char- Charlemagne, please. Go to, Hello, uh, who's this? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, what's your name? Hi, my name is Tish. I'm calling from Houston. Hey, Tish. What's your question for Ebony K. Williams? It's not really a question. I'm just saying I'm, well, first of all, good morning to everybody. I just want to say that I am Team Ebony, and I don't see anything that she's saying is wrong. She's let her uh, platform, everyone who follows her, know that as an older woman, I'm just giving you advice. I've been there. I've been through college, and this is my feelings based on my experiences, and I just feel like she should be respected for it. Okay. Well, thank you for calling, Mama. Appreciate it, sis. Thank you so much. So Have a good day. So let's put, let's put a button on this, man. Cause, yeah, you know, let's, I, let's wrap I, this up. I think this was very informative and very... Uh, 
very, very, very educational. And I would like to say <laughs> Ebony K. Williams is not Kevin Samuels with a silk press. Okay, she's, not at all. We're not, not championing Ebony K. mediocrity. No, she's Ebony K. Williams, and yeah. I believe if we listen with the intent to understand and not reply, mm. you would learn something. I appreciate. Listen, I appreciate the platform. I appreciate the conversation, I Lauren. I do too. Uh, I think that as Black women in particular, we got to hold the space uh, to have the difficult conversations. I saw a lot of people in the chat. Are we still talking about this? Are we over this? Yeah. Clearly, people feel a way they about do. the topic, and I think it's also good for people to see that, yeah. like. I, now I know you a bit differently, mm -hmm. so I probably will see things differently. But I probably will still disagree with some things, and it's I okay, it. and, it, yeah. and it's fine. totally fine. But that's life, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying that because I think another thing too that I don't want to happen from this is people to take the points where we didn't disagree, or where you were strong, or I was strong, or vice versa, mm -hmm. and be like, it's combative. It's not. It's they gonna do us. that anyway, though. Yeah, but that's I but right. I want to put it on record that that is that can happen, and then at the end of this, we gonna talk because I do want to know more about the fertility thing. I do want to talk Absolutely. to you about it. I do want you know what I mean. Like that's important to put out. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that. I, I just think that the moral of the story is people are going to eat the meat and spit up and spit Whoa. out the seeds. Excuse me. They're going to eat. You know what? <laughs> somebody what nasty. Somebody, somebody nasty in here. Because somebody you, ain't got a good diet. Um, you're going to eat the meat and spit out the seeds as we do with watermelon. Get your heads oh, out of the gutter got you, got you. as we do with oh. watermelon. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> I've been in this Who room all week. No, I'm thinking flesh. I'm Who sorry. Who raised you? Right, I'm right, just playing. Right. Uh, and, and that goes with this conversation. Yeah. That goes whether we're talking about bus driver gay, whether we're talking about black men in school, whether we're talking about wealth or anything else. So the content is for the taking. I welcome the critique and the conversation. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining and, us and, and having a great conversation. Make sure you subscribe to the whole important co Holden Court podcast. With, yeah, uh, we're Ebony back with season Dustin. three soon. Thank Charlamagne, you. Did I keep the same energy? The energy was needed. I don't know, I, man. You so. was, was shrunk a little bit. No, no, no. That's not true. That's not true for me. You love that. I asked you. I don't even know why I asked you. I don't even know why you asked me either, girl. Mercy. Hold on. Make sure you watch Equal Justice, too. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Check your local listings. Yes. Syndicate. When we come back, Nyla will be joining us. Pastor Ark, so don't go anywhere. It's a Friday. Thank you, ladies. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hilarious. Wake that ass up. In the morning. The Breakfast Club.